we actually have a conversation with Brian Kraft, who did the revenue cycle yeah. analysis. And that was one of the things that we brought up with Brian is, is, is the letter format. Oh, did you? Letter mm -hmm. format. He, he was uh, more than well and interested to help us out there. So oh, good. we've got that in the mission. Good. Um, I, about that. Yeah, Brian Kraft, too, yes. who is our expert with revenue cycle. Um, has lots of experience working in the hospital business office. Um, so he's sort of one of those guys who's experienced it, you know, mm -hmm. um, at each area. So he does have some potential recommendation. Okay. We would have so, to get involved. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Ray's department was wonderful in providing us as a committee a timeline and, and a copy of everything that they sent out. And um, so we had started from there, but you know, haven't had time to go much further. Yeah. So it sounds like we're, we're not so much process yeah. bound, but, but maybe uh, there's maybe a better way to, there's still a better way to skin the cat in terms of communication. Maybe. That's the area. And that seems to be our bigger focus on. Yeah. More effective way to. Yeah. Process-wise, you really do a phenomenal job. Yeah. Um, and you have a in fact, there was somebody that y'all were worried about Brian even interacting with. So, you know, you can't take her. Yeah. What, about, what about Ray Spray? Oh, that's right. Because she collects all my stuff. He does it. Yeah. 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 That's not part of your job. Yeah. 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 Right. And, and we, we will be, we we will be checking if we lose it. That's right. That's right. Very, very good questions. Yeah. Anybody else have any uh, questions or comments? Let's, uh, we'll jump into the recommendations. And, uh, um, you know, as we mentioned, it's kind of a parallel, and I, and I apologize, they're not quite in order to totally just saw, but just kind of to, to walk through them. And these things kind of from um, more of those, those yellow areas that have been uh, managed here. Uh, you know, a couple of key things, uh, and some of these are going to kind of relate to some of the, the market dynamics and some of that strategy that we're going to talk about here is kind of our last few recommendations as well. But one, one area of, of, of interest and in recommendations we think that would be very important. You know, there, there are a number of key stakeholders in healthcare in the community, and, and the physicians are very principal to those key stakeholders. So we, we make the recommendation that uh, it would be beneficial and, and, and time well spent to spend some time with some of these key medical staff members, talk a little bit about what's happening in their practices, talk about a little bit what their interaction with the patients are like, uh, what are they seeing, what are their thoughts in the hospital as well. But more important to understand the market dynamics as a whole. How's that affecting them? Because they're part of this. They're part of this as well. They're, they're a key component to, to healthcare. It's not just about the hospital. It's about the whole healthcare act sector itself. It's very key to understand. Uh, <clears throat> there was a lot of manual process to gathering the data. Uh, the team did a, did a, a gentleman's work, and many of you guys are privy to getting that data. And there's been a lot of dialogue around that. Uh, clearly, there's there's a new IT focus and some different things down the road. Uh, and, uh, you know, coming on site, I think we spend some time uh, uh, looking at some certain areas, kind of losing some of these as well. But that's a very, very key component. Uh, particularly, we look at uh, kind of our overall mar market capture opportunities. And, and again, that comes back to the strategy element. We want to make sure that you know, the capture amount of information is very well in the front end, and that correlates to, to what was uh, sent to us. Particularly, we look at our, our self pay population, what's going on in the market demographic aspect from a self pay perspective as well as we, we look at managed care, too. What's happening there, we capture the information for them, so. Okay, I got, I'll say self-pay is the, the term that we use for um, folks who do not have insurance. And so as a result, it's attempting to uh, get those folks either classified in a charity care kind of classification, um, which of course you then can report uh, to the state in terms of the amount of charity care that you provide, um, or get them assistance to, to become part of Medicaid or any other kind of public assistance. And so when you have a high self-pay, then what we try to look at is just to make sure that your processes are in place, that you have offered that particular patient as much assistance to get some other type of payment as possible. And that relates to the, some of the revenue cycle aspects as well. We've talked a lot about the hospital. Um, we also think it's an important exercise for, you, for everybody to consider. You know, uh, there was monumental legislation passed um, um, 
with the, the, the Reform Act and the reconciliation of that Reform Act. And uh, from that, uh, there's a lot of unknowns, a lot of questions about how that's going to be and, uh, actually uh, put in the rules and regulations that we have to uh, <coughs> deal with. But there's, there's a need to take a look at the potential impact of this to the hospital. Um, so we've actually just started that process with our own hospitals, modeling out uh, what a 10 year forecast looks like, assuming uh, some key components within the legislation that we can understand. Uh, and that's, that's the different mechanisms for more qualified individuals in the sort of Medicare, Medicaid type program, and as well as for the market uh, basket decreases that we can anticipate. Some of the other little uh, components that are out there. So it, it's worthwhile, particularly to look at planning, development, strategy. What's the impact this, this act's going to have on us in this community, and, and more importantly, to us within the walls as well as our medical staff in the community? That's very key from a board standpoint from the fiduciary aspect to understand, you know, we're trying to drive the ship, we're trying to drive that vision, but now all of a sudden you've been thrown this big, you know, uh, hurricane in front of us, it's called that Reform Act, and what's going to come out on the other end is not what it's today. Uh, healthcare is going to fundamentally change, and we understand it. In fact, uh, there are a lot of uh, different organizations that are on top of this from a think tank perspective as well as an application perspective. And uh, the, the thought process right now is somewhere between 10 to 18 percent of the hospitals in this country are closed. Uh, that's significant. Uh, likewise, you're going to see a lot of regional consolidation. Uh, the aspect of uh, partnering with bigger is better type of discussion is going to be very paramount. With, uh, and right behind that, uh, what are the key areas that we're going to be in? How do we partner with our medical staff to do it differently? Uh, and how do we become most efficient in what we do as an organization? And that's, as you guys know, again, it's a very complicated business, so to be on top of all these things is a challenge in and of itself, and now it's going to be compounded by that. I mean, let me interject something. I don't know if everybody's gotten their copy of Trustee Magazine. There's an article in, in there about this very topic. And, and uh, one of them, one, that the article really drives home the point of not just depending on staff to give us a 15-minute pre presentation. And that's our knowledge base. I don't know if you picked up on that, but I know that hit home with me about how, how critical it was that we've got to go out somehow, some way on our own, in addition to the staff uh, supplement and gain our own. And I know some of us, are, or most of us, are planning on going to our uh, class in uh, July. And, and that, that's a, I know that there's sessions there that's about right. that, yeah. and, and I would encourage those that aren't if you're on the bubble to schedule because that, that it means that that just drives home how incumbent that is for us to to do what he's talking about and what that article. Yeah, yeah in fact, our our CEO uh, uh, Wilson uh, made a copy the other day, and he's heard probably at this point in time ten or twelve different presentations. And every time he hears it, he hears something new. Right. So there's a lot of stuff out there. And, and, and people are just really starting to turn those pages over. I mean, it's almost 2,000 pages of stuff. And that's a big impact to, you know, that, that we have to figure out. So. And the, with the, the financial impact studies um, that, that we've been seeing in our markets, it, it's all very different depending on the market. But it's basically um, it, the balance between Medicare cuts that are coming and the increased um, uh, coverage that people who don't have insurance have. <coughs> and it's not always a, 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 a pleasant kind of balance. Um, and so the financial impacts can really let you know um, kind of the direction that things are going. Um, we've sort of scared some of our board members, but after the initial scare, um, then you can begin to think in terms of what needs to happen. What are, what are some of those key strategies that need to take place? Okay. So you're exactly right. I mean, all, all of us need to continue to learn more about what the impact.